Respect. Men and women working together to end domestic violence. My name is Cress. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to juggle. And the reason that I've taken part in this video is mostly to raise money for Women's Aid and Respect, which are two fantastic charities who are doing lots of work maybe needed now more than ever to help both men and women who are suffering domestic abuse which at the moment whilst many people may be trapped at home with their abuser is particularly important whilst we're all in lockdown studies have shown that people have said that the influence of their abuser on them has got worse since lockdown started so the donations are needed to those two charities now more than ever and also because juggling is a really cool skill to have and it's fairly easy to learn. Anybody can learn to juggle. I personally learned to juggle just like this by watching a video many years ago. Uh, so anybody can do it. And I would not consider myself somebody with particularly good hand-eye coordination. So people always say, well, I can't juggle because I'm not very good at catching, but really it's just a process. And if you follow the steps, I think anybody can learn to juggle. So we're going to be learning to juggle the most basic three ball pattern today. It's called the three ball cascade and it looks like this. So to be able to do this, you're going to need three balls of the same size. They don't have to be juggling balls like these ones. If you've got some juggling balls at home, that's great. You can use tennis balls. You can use another kind of ball. You can use fruit as well. Just bear in mind, it might get a little bit bruised if you drop it on the floor. Anything that is roughly round and ideally as similar weight as possible. So roughly the same size and weight. Sometimes if you see a cartoon of juggling, you might often see the balls going around in a circle like this. So that's not what we're going to be learning today. That's called a three ball shower and it's much more difficult from a three ball cascade. So if you've ever tried to learn to juggle and that's what you've been aiming for and you really, really struggled, nobody starts by learning that one. So don't worry, we're going to be starting nice and simply with the three ball cascade with this one here. So the first thing you'll need to do is to put two of those balls away and just start with one ball. So learning to juggle will be a lot easier if you've got the basics down. So if you can do a really nice clean throw with one ball, you'll find it much easier to learn to juggle. So what you need to do is to stand with your feet a little bit apart, shoulder width apart, hold your hands like this, and then you're just going to throw the ball so it peaks about eye level. If you go much higher, it's going to be really difficult to keep your throws accurate. And if you go too low, you'll find that your pattern later on, if our throws aren't very high, your pattern will be really, really small, which means that you've got to be quite quick. So eye level around about here is the perfect place. So you're going to take your one ball and you're going to just throw it up like this. So you're just throwing from hand to hand, trying to make those throws as similar as possible. You're not going to be looking at your hands. You might notice I'm staring almost straight ahead. So I can look into the camera and still do this and still be able to catch the ball. So you're kind of looking somewhere just beyond the peak. So where the ball gets to its highest point, that's where you're going to be looking. So kind of staring straight ahead. If you look at your hands, you'll find it's really difficult to throw. And when you get into doing three balls, it's going to be impossible to see them all in the air if you're looking at your hands. So just practice. If you need to pause the video, that's absolutely fine. Practice just throwing some nice clean throws like this. 
Now when we move on to two balls and three balls, you might find that after a while you actually feel like you need to come back to doing one ball just to get that one throw really precise. And that's absolutely fine. That happens quite often when people are learning to juggle. They move quite quickly onto two balls and three balls and then have to go back to one. Absolutely not a problem. But let me show you what you will do with two balls. So you can pick up your second ball. And this is once you feel pretty confident with just passing one ball from one hand to the other. Now, one thing that a lot of people do that's a really bad habit that we have to get out of before we start is they'll throw one ball up in the air, which is correct, and then pass the other ball like this, kind of like that shower that we saw earlier. So they do this. And one of the balls is going up and the other one is just going round. Now, that's OK for two balls. But the problem is, if you try and do that with three balls, it's possible. But it's a lot more difficult. So we need to really get out of that habit. If you've never done that before, yeah, that's perfect. You're a step ahead. But if you have, that's something we need to stop doing. So you're not going to do this. What you're going to do is you're going to throw one ball just like before, like this. And when it reaches its peak, you're going to throw the other ball exactly the same up like that to the same peak to the other hand, like this. Some people find it quite easy to say in their head, it helps them to say, throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. One mistake that people often have is it feels really fast and they panic and they end up kind of doing something more like throw, throw, catch, catch. And actually, it's not that fast. Yours is going to be the same speed as mine. It's just throw, throw, catch, catch. Nice and relaxed, or as relaxed as you can be when you're trying to throw and catch two balls. So you're just going to go throw, throw, catch, catch. It's really important that that second ball does exactly the same pattern as your first ball. So in juggling, every ball is going up to the peak and then down to the other hand. Nothing's going sideways. Nothing's going any higher than any other ball. When we're doing this basic cascade, they are all following exactly the same pattern. So you're just going to practice that a few times. Throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. If you're finding that you're really, really struggling with the accuracy of your throws, which can be quite common when people start off, don't worry too much about the catching. So the most important thing is to get those nice, clean throws. And once you've concentrated on those throws and got the throws in the right direction, you'll find that catching becomes much easier. So if it's easier, just think throw, throw, and then drop, drop. You don't need to worry about catching it to begin with. So I'm just gonna do that. Throw, throw, and I've just let them drop to the floor. So if that's easier, try doing that. You should find they land roughly by your feet. So one ball by each foot. If they're landing really far away from you, you need to keep practicing those throws until you've got the throws exactly right. And then you can try and put the catches in. So really work on getting those throws nice and accurate. And then the catching will just follow on. One thing that people often find is they accidentally throw the balls quite far away from them. So they might end up throwing them really far forwards. One thing that can sometimes help with that, I think it's a psychological thing, is standing in front of a wall. So there's a wall here next to me. If I do it like this, sometimes that can help because psychologically, I think you're less likely to throw the balls forward if there's something in front of you. Also, if you're finding that it's taking you a long time trying to have to chase after the balls, practicing over a bed or a chair can be useful because the balls won't fall quite so far and it's a lot easier to pick them back up again. So try a few different things, but just remember the accuracy of the throw is the most important thing. And then whether you can catch it or not, that comes second. If you need to, and you're finding it really difficult to do that, you can just go back to one throw like this, one ball, and just keep going with one ball for a little while until you feel a bit more confident with your throws, then go back to two. You'll probably find whilst you're learning to juggle, you do that quite a few times. So you might start with one ball, then get to two, then get to three, but actually you need to go back to practice that one ball again. And that's absolutely fine. It's just making that muscle memory, teaching your body so that this becomes really natural and really easy to do. So with our two balls, 
try that from both hands. I'm starting with this hand, which is my right hand at the moment. So try it with your left hand. So it's exactly the same. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Just keep doing it like that. You can't put them together. It doesn't really work out when we've got two balls and two hands. Uh, if you want to use two hands, it's normally easier if they're crossing over to have an odd number of balls. So with an even number of balls and we're doing a cascade pattern, it doesn't really work very simply if we only have two balls. So you can't really go throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. It doesn't fit naturally. And that's because there's a hole where that third ball should be. So try and get really, really confident with doing that. It's really important that you know what you're doing and can do that fairly easily before you move on to three balls, because you'll then find it much easier to do three balls when you give it a go. Give that a go, get fairly confident. And then when you're ready, it is time to move on to three balls. Sometimes I find that some people, when I've taught juggling before, can pick this up in around about half an hour. Some people it takes them a few hours, some people it takes them a few days. But anybody can learn to juggle. So if it's taking you a little bit longer than you'd hoped, take a break, come back to it some other time. And hopefully then you'll find it's a bit easier. Sometimes I think you can juggle a little bit too much and you kind of get a bit caught up in your head and it's difficult to make it work. So if you need to take a break, just come back another time. Let's show you how we'd add in three balls. So the first thing is holding three balls in your hand. One hand still got one ball in it and one hand's going to have two. Probably your dominant hand, so the hand that you write with. So I've put two in my right hand because I'm right handed. The first thing to do is just still try doing that throw, throw, catch, catch with the two balls whilst holding that other ball in your hand. You'll only have to do that once right at the beginning of the juggle, but it's useful to get used to doing that because sometimes just having that extra ball can completely throw you off again and you'll need to practice a bit more. So just practice releasing this ball whilst you've got another one in your hand like this. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Don't worry if by having that extra ball in your hand, it throws off all the hard work that you've just done. You could have been really good at doing throw, throw, catch, catch, and then you put another ball in and it completely messes up your pattern. That's OK. And that's pretty normal. So just have a bit of a practice and it really won't take you long to get used to launching this ball. So we normally throw the ball at the front of our hand first whilst holding this ball in our hands. So the way we'd add that third ball in, I'm just going to show you where it would be. So we go throw, throw, throw. So hopefully you notice that extra throw. So it's throw, throw which is what we've been doing before. But this time it's throw, throw, throw. All that's happening is you are doing the same thing with every single ball, just going up and back down again. And when one ball is at this point, the peak, that's when you throw the next ball. And you always go right, left, right, left, right, left, just like a pattern. And like we said before, it's not particularly fast. You don't have to be really, really fast to be able to do this. It's quite relaxed. Try and chill out as much as you can and try and do it just like this. So throw, throw, throw. It's just three throws and three catches to begin with. Throw, throw, throw. Now before, when we were learning two balls, we said it's more important to get the throws right than to worry about the catches to begin with. So what you might need to do is throw, throw and get that last one out of your hand. Don't worry too much about where it goes to begin with. Just do throw, throw, get that last one out of your hand. Don't worry about where it goes. Just get used to really getting that third ball out of your hand. So I'll show you that one again. So throw, throw, get it out of your hand. Then we work on making that last one more accurate. So throw, throw, throw. I didn't catch it that time still, but it still landed somewhere near my feet. And that's what we're aiming for. If a juggler was juggling a three ball cascade and they suddenly stopped, all three balls would be likely to land two by one foot and one by the other foot because your feet are roughly below your hands. And that's where the balls were heading for. So just really practice going throw, 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 drop, drop, drop. And don't worry too much about catching them to begin with. Just try and make sure, number one, they all get out of your hands in the right order. 
So right, left, right, or left, right, left. And number two, try and work on getting those throws as accurate as possible so that they all start to land near your feet. If you need to, go back to one ball or go back to two balls. If you need to, that's absolutely fine. So once we've got our throws, then we can hopefully work on our catches. So we're going to go throw, 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 and then we've caught them all. So throw, throw, throw. It's just like before. They're peaking around about eye level, coming down, and remember, you're looking straight ahead, not at your hands. Remember, if they're all going really far away from you, you can try facing a wall like this, if that makes it easier. Or you can just work on not worrying about catching them, and just really focus on those throws. So if you get to that point and you can do throw, throw, throw like this, you can pretty much juggle. Now, some jugglers count it that you can juggle when you can do two times the number of throws as you have balls. So if we can do six throws and six catches, because we've got three balls, some jugglers would say that counts. So if you were doing a world record for the number of balls juggled, if you wanted to get the world record for seven balls, sometimes you'd count it as 14 throws and 14 catches, depending on who you were talking to. So we're going to throw, 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 and then catch them all. The next step is just a throw with the next hand. So I've been going right, left, right. The next throw is going to come from my left hand. So now we're going up to four throws and four catches. I'm going to try this. Right, left, right, left. And then I catch them all. So right, left, right, left. And catch them all. And all you're going to do from this point onwards is just keep trying to increase the number of throws that you do. So you might start by doing a one, two, three, four. And then you might want to do one, two, three, four, five. And then gradually work your way up until you're able to keep going for a fairly long time. And eventually it should look something like this. So it's throw, 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 throw. You can probably hear that it's not particularly fast. It's not kind of, it doesn't have to be down here, really, really, really small. It doesn't have to be really, really high just somewhere in the middle, peeking around about eye level. And that's how you learn the basics of juggling. So I'll just run through those steps once more, and then I'm just going to show you a little bit of a few tricks that you can try. If you get really good at that, there's a couple of fairly simple tricks that look quite impressive. So at first I'll just run through the basic steps of learning to juggle. So step one was one ball, feet shoulder width apart, and you're just going to throw it to peak at eye level and land in the other hand. The next was two balls, where we go throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch, both doing exactly the same thing. When one gets to the top, the next one goes like this. Throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. And we said we want to get really good and really accurate at doing that from both hands. So right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. Remember, we said if you don't catch them to begin with, that doesn't matter. Practice your throws first and then work on your catches, because it's a lot easier to catch something that's accurate than to be flying all around the room, catching the balls in all sorts of different places. From there, it's very difficult to move up to three. So practice your throws being really accurate and then think about your catches. Then we add in the third ball. We tried just doing this with a ball in our hand to begin with. And then we went throw, throw, throw. And then we gradually increase the number of throws we did. Every single time when one of those balls is at its peak, we throw the next ball and it goes right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And then at the end, all you need to do once you've finished your juggling, you can throw one a little bit higher if you want to. It looks cool like this and catch it like that or catch two in one hand and one in the other. So that's the basics of juggling. As I say, some people might find that really, really easy and they might have been able to follow along with this video. Most people, if you've never juggled before, you'll find that there's possibly some bad habits you have to get out of. So we definitely don't do this. And also you might find it takes you a little bit longer 
then you need to pause the video and have a little bit of a try. And that's absolutely fine. As we said, try a little bit every day and hopefully by the end of lockdown, you might have learnt a new skill. And I did say I want to show you some very simple tricks. There's all sorts of different tricks you can do with three balls. So three balls are quite versatile. And the one that I'm going to show you is quite simple. It's this one here, where hopefully you would have noticed the ball went over the pattern. And the cool thing about that, this is called juggler's tennis, where there's one ball going over the top of the pattern at all times. So the way that you're going to do that one is let's practice it with two balls to begin with. One ball comes towards you like throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. But instead of your balls going underneath each other like this, this ball comes towards your hand and you throw this one in an arc over the top like that. I'll just make sure it stays in the camera shot in an arc over this one. So I'm going to throw this ball, this one, towards this hand and then I'll throw this ball over so like that I'll show you the difference so before you were doing and now we're doing where it goes over I can practice that on both hands generally if you're learning a new trick in juggling you quite often break it down to two balls most jugglers would do that, even very experienced jugglers, if they're learning a new trick, would be quite likely to go down to two balls to practice it. And they also be likely to practice it on both hands. So I'm now going to throw this ball to this hand and then the ball's going to go over like this. OK, so now we can do it this way. What we're going to do is try and put that into our pattern. So to be able to start learning tricks, you should be fairly confident with doing your three ball cascade like this. Now, when you're fairly confident, pick a ball with your eyes and have a think. That's the one that's going to go over the top. Now, in a minute, I'm going to go three, two, one, over the top. Let's try again. Three, two, one one and over the top. Now once you've learned overthrows then that means there's loads of different tricks that you can do. So I was doing it from my right hand. I'm right-handed so I tend to learn things in my right hand first and then copy them onto my left hand because I find that a bit harder. Uh, you might find it's easier in a different hand or you might find there's not that much difference. So now I'm going to just try it with my left hand. <laughs> And then something that's really cool that you can do with this is the one that we said before, juggler's tennis. So it looks like the ball is kind of like a tennis ball. It's going from one side to the other, just like this. So this is one of those patterns where the balls aren't all doing the same thing. So when we get into some slightly more interesting three ball patterns, the balls might be following their own path. So in this one, one of the balls is going to be going over the top like this, and the other two balls are going underneath but we're still going right, left, right, left. The only difference is that instead of one of the balls going under, like it normally would, it's going over the top. Let me show you. Hopefully you can see. It looks a bit cooler if you happen to have balls that are different colors. It looks a bit cooler because you have the one ball going over the top that's a different color to the other two. One other thing you can do is do all of your throws over the top. So if I do all my throws over the top, it's called a reverse cascade because it basically looks like you've taken your three ball cascade, videoed it, and then turned the video backwards. So a reverse cascade is just where all the balls, instead of going underneath each other, they go over the top like this. Perfect. So hopefully you've learned how to do a three ball cascade. As I say, don't worry if you haven't learned it in the time it took you to watch this video. Uh, that's not really that long to learn to juggle. Practice a little bit every day and hopefully it won't take you too long. And then once you've learned to do the basic three ball cascade, come back, practice those overthrows and see if you can learn juggler's tennis and the reverse cascade where you make all the balls go in the opposite direction. 
Don't forget, if you've enjoyed watching this video and you've learned something from it, it'd be really great if you could make a donation to either of those two charities, Respect or Women's Aid, uh, to help the people that are struggling during the lockdown with domestic abuse. Thank you very much for watching and happy juggling.